Mutating just one amino acid in a very long chain of proteins can really shake things up. For instance, changing one amino acid in green fluorescent protein can turn it into blue fluorescent protein. By the end of this first day, you will be completely familiar with site-directed mutagenesis. Site-directed mutagenesis is the process of selecting a specific DNA nucleotide to alter, then designing a primer that anneals to that strand of DNA and making millions of mutated plasmids using PCR. Once this has been accomplished, the newly multiplied DNA plasmid is transformed into a host bacterial cell that will then reproduce on a large scale and demonstrate the effect of the mutation. Why do this, you might ask? It's because this is an example of a very important method of biological research where biologists can alter the DNA to change the makeup and structure of a protein in a cell to study the effect it has on the function of that protein. While this may seem somewhat insignificant, it has some very important applications. Know that altering just one part of the protein can have a dramatic effect on the cells, such as making certain cells unable to reproduce or even making it impossible for a cell to construct membranes. Today you will be introduced to the concepts and procedures of creating your own primer and performing the PCR reaction both of which are vital to site-directed mutagenesis. Before we begin, however, there are some key terms that will help you understand the next step of site-directed mutagenesis. Now we will actually be performing the mutation of the DNA using PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, to create millions of copies of the plasmid that will then be put into the bacterial host cells to create our BFP or YFP, depending on your choice. Before this though, you have to make sure that you have all your required materials and that all your equipment is clean and in working order. You must have a pipette that measures in microliters, as well as multiple pipette tips. You also need microtubes and a thermocycler or PCR machine. How to perform PCR. First, grab your PCR tube and label it. You should label on the cap and or side with your initials, the date, and also, you should have to label what you are planning to change your GFP into, BFP or YFP. Second, after you label your PCR tube, you should notice that there are already some components inside the tube. The ingredients you see are the GFP DNA template in a water solution with a buffer. Third, be sure to pipette the correct amounts accurately when performing the following steps. There are two depths which the pipette can be depressed to. The first one is to uptake the liquid into the pipette tip, while the second one, the deeper one, is to expel it from the pipette. A tip for using the pipette is to change tips each time you pipette a different compound and dispose of the used pipette tips properly. Fourth, place your cap on your PCR tube tightly. Be sure to flick down any ingredients stuck in the cap. Tomorrow, we will be performing DNA transformation, which uses the plasmid we have just created and inserts it into a bacterial host cell through a heat shock process in order for the cell to accept this new DNA and begin production of the proteins coated by the new DNA.